this morning, but stayed up a little late last night. <clears throat> so, driving down south, uh, I could go see what I could do with this whitetail tag. And uh, just chasing things around on some public land. So, it's about two hour, two and a half hour drive ahead of me. And uh, so I get the gear out and go set up pretty much right when I get in. And sit this afternoon, sleep in the truck all day tomorrow and then get back tomorrow night so quick turn and burn pretty much but uh figure uh, might as well try to get this tag punch before the year starts running out so here we go while we're cruising there's about 30 deer over here and right there in the middle of the screen just a monster mule deer get to where I'm parking and this guy's just hanging out on the railroad tracks. So I peed peed to get in here. And Buck's pushing that dough across the field. I don't know how to make a move on him. Probably got to a good spot where I can put some binocular glass on the mule deer. The one I saw on the train track though was a white tail. But all those guys are mule deer. Small buck and the really big buck are both mule deer. All the does, except for one, are does, are uh, mule deer. One white tail. At least I found my arrow. Right here. I saw just a couple feet underneath. Yeah, but they're all in the field over there feeding out now.
skirts it down, it's all this pass with something on the way out but I'm not holding my breath but the wind just blows right over the top of these trees and it goes right to where the stands at so I was miserable from about 8 30 and 9 30 had to get down get in the sun get out of the wind for a few minutes and then tuck back into the stand but just a little morning so get some coffee and come up with a plan for this afternoon. Well, just hanging out now. Might take a little power nap. We'll see. But just got back over to uh, by the railroad crossing so that I can just see if anything's on its feet and just have those two does cross. Looks like a mom and a baby. Probably last, you know, obviously last year's, but she was looking behind her a little. Maybe there's a buck behind her, but she keep an eye out and something comes and I try to go put a chase on it and see what happens. Alright, just spot in. Some does and a buck right back over there. I'll watch them, see if they does work to my left. If they do, I'll try to cut them off. Well, driving again, uh, and it's about four four by four mule deer buck. Um, I caught him. I caught a, some does moving in the woods. And I see him pop out, and he's raking on a tree. And he goes back into the woods, and then he comes back out with a couple more does and a smaller buck. And he was pushing them my way, but of, of course. If I was going to cut them off, my wind was blowing right at them. And even though they're like 150 yards away, they're winding me. And uh, he pushed them to the east, and it's like, I'm not going to be able to cut them off. So I uh, got back to the truck, and uh, a buddy of mine sent me a pin for a stand on some private ground. And I'm going to shoot over there and sit for the afternoon and see what happens. Fingers crossed, get some deer working through. I haven't decided if I'll shoot a doe or not. Um, I got a month and some change left, so still undecided on that. We'll see when the moment comes. But I'm gonna get over there, get uh, parked, and walk in and get set up and get cozy for the afternoon. So, hoping, uh, 
obviously for a little bit more deer movement than this morning so based off those deer being on their feet and uh another one of our buddies was out there uh sitting in the stand last night he shot a doe so i am hoping that uh the deer movement will be consistent through there and maybe something good will walk through so heading that way Oh man, did that work out. The stand I was going to sit in is not this tree, but that second tree right there. When I was driving down this road, I got to the stop sign over there, turned around, was coming back to park, and I noticed that there's this buck cruising the edge over here. So instead of climbing in the stand, I walked over here and I tucked in behind this big log. And, uh, and he came working this edge here and he got to like this bush I thought he was like keep walking but he cut through right here so I was expecting him to work out so I was waiting for a longer shot I tagged him right here but it was high a little high because I was so close so I'm hoping I still got all those vitals so I shot him right there through here. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's good. I think it's a good shot. Well, since Jim put me on this spot, he's gonna cruise over and we'll wait for him. We'll go track this deer together. Fingers crossed we find them. The big one I yes. Oh yeah. Oh, thank goodness. 
so chicken. Oh, man. Dang. That's probably my biggest deal to date. Holy moly. I just got chills. That's the, the one you're talking about? No, it's a big one. Is it? He's a nice one. There's a big one. <sighs> That's damn nice. Really. Oh. Feet. Well, that's a wrap on that Colorado deer tag. Man, what a good day. You know, after just suffering this morning with that cold wind just not layered up as much as I probably should have been because I knew I had to walk in uh, taking a good power nap and seeing that mule deer chasing around them does with that other smaller buck I was really on the fence on if I should stay out there and try to get that deer and uh, you know that there's probably an opportunity to close the distance on them but ultimately decided to go try out the stand that uh friend jim was able to uh get me access to on some private land and glad i went and the way that that played out uh the wind was the right direction happened to see the deer moving happened to have a really good natural blind with that tree stump to hide behind and uh you know, if I would have stayed towards that stand and hoped that he worked his way all the way over, uh, he would have cut into the woods before I could see him. So by just kind of rolling the dice and making that decision, it just worked out perfectly. 10 yard shot. Originally, I thought I hit him kind of high, but then the blood was really good. And then once we recovered the deer, entry was a little on the high side but because i was shooting down the exit was beautiful and uh he expired quickly uh didn't suffer and uh can't complain so ultimately uh man a huge shout out to jim uh, <laughs> he's one of those guys that has all of his processes and the way that he does business down to a t and uh I waited for him. <coughs> you saw I waited for him to get out there. He brought his deer cart. I didn't. I don't know why I didn't record us pulling the deer out, but uh, brings his deer cart out, helps me lug it out of there. Has a hoist for the back of the truck. Get the deer loaded up, super easy. Get it back to his house. Get the deer uh, clean. On um, you know, get get the internals out and. Uh, had a, had a little pull ready it was going to help me get rid of the guts uh, it was ready to help me break the whole deer apart but uh got to try to uh, cape it out and i'm going to try to taxidermy that head so uh i told him not to worry about it. but then sure enough him and his wife they grabbed me a burger from uh, one of the food trucks in town so i could take it on the road with me um, get the deer loaded up in the back of the truck and already on my way back home so and I probably would still be uh, on the back end of that dragging the deer out process and getting them cleaned if, uh, if Jim wasn't there to help me out. So very grateful for that. So a two and a half hour drive home and uh, probably all day tomorrow I'll be getting this deer situated to uh, get broken down. And that's going to do a wrap for Colorado Whitetail 2024. So you know, the footage was a little spotty just because it was a broken up hunt and uh, a couple different trips and a couple different sits and not a whole lot of great footage but just like in the stuff captured so for memory's sake so uh thanks for watching and until next time